Hello, my name is William Rice, and I'm studying at the University of Minnesota with uh, my supervisor, Cody Herning, and uh, the PIs of the lab are Sun Yu Chen and Donald Wise. And I will be presenting on my project regarding the evaluation of infection and attraction of soybean cyst nematode in pennycress. To begin, one of the main goals with pennycress is to implement it into a corn soybean rotation. In order for that to be successful, we have to consider other pests that affect crops in that rotation. For this project, we looked into soybean cyst nematode, which is a major pest in soybean that causes around one and a half billion dollars in yield losses annually. In greenhouse studies, we have found that pennycress is an alternative host to soybean cyst nematode, so it is imperative we know how strongly pennycress attracts the pest. Population density for soybean cyst nematode in pennycress is about 20% of what is seen on susceptible soybean varieties. Here we have a diagram of the soybean cyst nematode life cycle. The life cycle begins at the cyst and then eggs release from the cyst in the spring. Female juvenile then penetrates the root epidermis where it develops into an adult. The male adult then fertilizes the female that's embedded in the root. The female then releases her eggs in the matrix and then also keeps eggs inside of her body. The female will die and then detach from the root once again and becomes a cyst, which is the overwintering body. There exist two key developmental temperature constraints that are important for an overwintering crop like pennycress. Egg hatch and juvenile development does not occur until 10 degrees Celsius in the spring, and development in the root stops at 5 degrees Celsius going into the winter. My project had two experimental objectives. The first objective was to quantify juvenile infection in pennycress roots. And the second objective was to determine the attraction or repulsion of soybean cyst nematode juveniles to root exudates. In the image on the right, we see a plant releasing exudates into the rhizosphere with nematodes in close proximity being attracted. And in that red circle, we can see the exudates in the, in the rhizosphere. And in the lower right of the image, we can see a J2 nematode infection in the roots. And we can see the individuals penetrating the root epidermis. For the juvenile infection portion of the project, we collected plants from two locations. The first being from field microplots in St. Paul, Minnesota, which we can see an example of directly to the right. The soil has a population of about 4,000 eggs per 100 cubic centimeters. The greenhouse plants were inoculated with about 1,000 J2 nematodes per cone. To the right, below the photo of the microplot, is an image of the greenhouse treatments being inoculated. Subsamples of 0.25 grams of root were collected and stained. From there, the number of juveniles in the roots were counted under the dissecting microscope, and there's an example of what the nematodes in the roots would look like at the bottom right of the slide. Here we have two figures depicting juvenile nematode infection in field microplots on the left and in the greenhouse on the right. The treatments are composed of pennycars and a susceptible soybean variety. On the y-axis, we observe the number of juvenile individuals residing in one gram of either soybean or pennycress root. In terms of data collected in the field plots, the results did end up being statistically different, denoted by the A classification for pennycress and B classification for soybean. From this, we can see that under field conditions, pennycress only harbors about 20% of the juvenile population density that would normally be seen on infected soybean. On the other hand, the data returned from numbers of nematode juveniles in the greenhouse treatments ended up not being statistically different, denoted by the A classification for both treatments. Juvenile infection in the greenhouse shows less significance than the field data, but the population size is still much lower comparatively, which makes sense for what we know. The bars also denote standard error. The first part of the J2 choice experiment involved collecting root exudates from soybean, wheat, pennycress, and camelina. To do that, we transplanted replicates of the plants into clay pots. We placed the pots over large beakers that had 100 milliliters of DI water poured over the soil surface, which drained through the, into the beakers for collection. The exudates were then filtered and stored in, in the freezer until needed. We do plan to send the exudates from different plant species in for GCMS so we can compare the chemical composition of the solutions in order to determine the similarities and differences between them. This will allow us to possibly determine why the nematodes are attracted to their host. To prepare the choice experiment, we insert the removable walls into the outer slots of the 3D in vitro device, which can be seen to the top right of the slide. 
We then pipetted phytogel into the center section and adjacent corridors. Phytogel is an auger-like substance that has certain properties which assist with the observation of nematodes. One of those properties is that it's transparent. It also enables simple observation under the stereo microscope. After the gel is cooled, add exudate to the treatment well and DI water to the control well. We then pipetted about 100 J2 nematodes into the center well on the surface of the phytogel. We then left that for 24 hours in a temperature and humidity controlled chamber. After that 24 hour period's up, we counted the J2s in each well using the stereo microscope. And an example of how the nematodes appears to the right in the image with the red circle. On the right of the slide is the 3D in vitro choice device. There are three wells separated by a corridor on either side. Nematodes are pipetted into the neutral zone on top of the phytogel and the treatment and control are pipetted into zone A and B respectively. The nematodes can then swim toward either stimulus. Once they get or once they enter the outer wells, they cannot escape due to sliding off the phytogel surface and becoming trapped. To evaluate the data, we calculated chemotaxis index. This takes the number of J2s in the test compound subtracted from the number of J2s in the control divided by the sum of those two values. This gives us a score that says whether the test compound attracted or repulsed the nematodes. Additionally, we can see if there was any lack of response to the test compound in any of the treatments. Understanding soybean cyst nematode juvenile infection and attraction to root exudates will assist in the management and control of the nematode when pennycress is grown for commercial purposes. Thank you for your attention. I would like to thank iPrefer's collaborating institutions, as well as my supervisor, Cody Herning, and my two colleagues, Joe Rickman and Dylan Baca.